Hello and welcome to Lone Legit Cheetah Plays, where you just have me and you. And today we are going to be playing Kaiserreich. The reason I am playing this on my own is because Pierce and Alex can't be asked to buy a £8 game, which is uh, uh, probably around $10 in the US. This game uh, is, or more specifically, this mod called Kaiserreich uh, is just bananas crazy. It's a mod that, um, it's an alternate history mod where it tries to recreate the scenario where Germany wins the First World War and there's all sorts of crazy, crazy nonsense happening in the world. So, uh, without further ado, let's begin. Uh, now, there are three campaigns to choose from, so you have the Germans uh, doing stuff in China, which I don't know anything about. You have the Russians fighting the Japanese, which I don't know anything about. And then you have the main Kaiserite game, which basically starts off in 1930... Oh, uh, give me a hint here, please. No hints? Alright, well I'm gonna guess it starts off in 1936 which in real history was three years after Hitler came to power. Now, I quite love this game because you get all sorts of crazy, crazy nonsense happening. Now, uh, let's play as Japan in this campaign and have the AI to be aggressive, the game speed to be very fast so we don't take forever to do anything. Except and let's begin! Okay, so this is the main game screen, which, um, as you can see, it's uh, not exactly a next-gen game, is it? Um, but this is the whole of Europe, and then we have Russia up here, the big green log, and we have a little spit of Japan, and uh, that, well, that used to be China. But uh, it's now split up into several different factions. Part of it is owned by the Germans, as you can tell by the bunch of German that they've written there. Uh, another part is owned by a Chinese emperor. Another part is owned, uh, well, my, my, the rest of it is mainly warlords. And they have Mongolia, which is, this man has the greatest name I have ever read. Roman Ungern von Sternberg. And he's giving the, a very stern look there, and uh, I don't... yeah, okay, fine. I don't know if you can see him, but he, he's, he's got a magnificent moustache to suit the name. Um, so, to give you a bit of backstory as to what's happened here, uh, Germany has won the First World War, and with that, uh, they aren't poor, like they were in the real world history. So, uh, Japan... sorry, what? No. France has gone absolutely, completely um, insane, uh, overthrown their government and become communist. Britain, after facing uh, an extra two years of warfare with Germany, because Germany couldn't invade Britain and Britain couldn't invade Germany, um, they descended, decided to basically agree to disagree, which apparently the, Brit uh, the people in Britain didn't agree with. So um, the, <laughs> the trade unions in Britain have overthrown the British government. And you now have uh, Philip Snowden and Arthur Horner as leaders of Britain in a communist Britain. Meanwhile, you may say, well, where's the Queen gone? Well, there wasn't a Queen at this point. There's currently a King, George V. He's now sitting in Canada, because Canada were the only people who'd say, yeah, okay, we won't get angry at you for that. And what else? Oh, yes, uh, Australia has somehow invaded New Zealand. I don't know why they would ever do that, but that happened. As I said, crazy bananas. Um, the United States is, well, apparently they did not take part in the Second World War. And Russia had lost almost everything. They lost a huge amount of their land here, and they lost a little bit over here, and quite a bit over here. And they are much smaller than what they used to, but still a giant, great, great big, overgrown green log. And they'll probably face civil war any minute now. Um, meanwhile, I'm playing as Japan. Japan is, uh, 
sitting in an awkward position where they've got the Russians here, who don't seem to like them very much, and they have the Chinese here, who really don't like them, and then they have their allies, the Feng Ting Republic, which are, I suppose they're Chinese as well. Um, they are okay with them. And then you have the... Um, this faction is a little bit crazy. This faction is... Basically, they own all this land, but the only part that's worth anything is this bit. Oops, that bit. Tiny bit here. They, well, they eventually can get a leader that is batshit insane and wants to become um, Tsar or King of all of the Russias. And um, as a small nation that literally is made up of one city, that is a huge undertaking. <laughs> So, um, and unfortunately, they're also my puppets, so they will probably drag me into a war with Russia if uh, the Feng Tang Republic doesn't drag me into a war with the, with, um, the Qing Empire. I hope that's being pronounced correctly. But yeah, this will be a highly e edited video. Um, mainly just the fact that we can't, we don't have two people in here because Alex won't buy an eight pound game and Piers doesn't, well, didn't buy an eight pound game. Um, so we'll we'll see. I hope that this will be interesting, and I hope that you'll take stay tuned to witness some of the absolute craziness that will unfold as the world devolves into a divine state of complete and utter madness. Um, so the research in this game is quite uh, interesting because you can select, whoop, you can select um, teams. To research, they've all got different uh, specialisms like uh, uh, Nishana Yoshio uh, is is um, chemistry, nuclear physics, and nuclear engineering and mathematics scientist with a skill of four. The higher the skill is, the faster they'll do your research. And uh, the specialists, well, what they specialize in, should uh, somewhat be in resemblance to what you're telling us research. So if I tell the Kokura Co Army Arsenal um, to research here. You can see that um, they require these things to be researched. So they have general equipment, artillery, electronics, munitions, and training to research this. And they have they have four of the five. So they have artillery, training, uh, general equipment, and munitions. Munitions. So uh, we'll tell them. Yes, okay, you, you can have the funding to research that. Uh, meanwhile, what else can we do? What else can we do? Now, as Japan, because you're an island nation, having a good navy is effectively survival. But also, we're now also stuck on land, so we will probably also need a good army. So, uh, let's make tanks. Tanks, tanks, tanks. That. They don't look like they're very good. Tokyo Gas and Electric. They might... They're probably the best for the job. Let's go for Tokyo Gas and Electric. Look, even their icon is a tank. Perfect. You can start making us tanks. Well, researching tanks. Um, we need aircraft. So, uh, we have... Oh, boy. Uh, so, this is close air support, which is basically a cheap version of tactical bombers. You have strategic bombers, which are great big planes. And they, I usually build a ton of those. Um, transport planes which allow you to send paratroopers into places carrier group aircraft which are built on top of your carriers aircraft carriers I'm probably not going to go for aircraft carriers for this one because they're very very difficult they take a long time to build and they have a ton of research that are needed for them so instead I'm going to go for um, you know destroyers, battleships and cruisers and so on you know the more interesting things and definitely submarines are you kidding me? why wouldn't you have submarines? just all over the sea Submarines. Um, yeah, so... Um, also, you can research anything at any time. However, uh, we're requiring that you research the previous one in the line. However, if you do it before, uh, as this one says, 1937, if I do try, try to start researching it in 1936, we won't have the technology in place to research it yet. So it will be very, very slow to research. So it's a bad idea to research things before their time. Uh, and it sort of adds a nice level of progression. And you'll never be able to research everything uh, until you get to like 1963 or something. 
then you might be able to. Um, yeah, see, that's 1938, that's 1940, so we have to wait four years before we can uh, research pre-planned defences. Now, I have paused the game at the moment, so don't worry, it's not going to go in live time, uh, which is, which would be absolutely awful. Um, ooh. A hospital probably sounds like a good idea. Nope. Logistics. Even better idea. Basically, without logistics, none of your troops can move anywhere. So it's very, very important to keep this up to date. And if I don't keep that up to date, I will have an army that's sole pu purpose is to stand still. So, ooh. Is that yet or tet? Tet Susan Nagata. You look trustworthy. You can research barrels. Um... Mountain uh, infantry are very specialised. That you get all sorts of specialised infantry. So marines, they are designed to uh, fight uh, in naval operations. So you can just land them directly on enemy shores. Well, this enemy, but you can land them directly on enemy shores, and they'll take and fight on it. Uh, whereas normal infantry, you would need to already own a port in that region. So naval infantry might be good, but it's 1940s. So we can't research that night yet. Airborne infantry, um, as I said. Drop from planes, so you can drop them behind enemy lines and have them crushed before your eyes. Cavalry, men on horses, basically. I, I, I don't really ever find a use for this. Um, so we won't upgrade that. Engineers, they are important. Engineers build bridges so your troops can move across all these goddamn rivers that are lying everywhere. I think the worst is uh, worst hit is Russia. Yeah, see, just rivers. Well, you can barely see it, but there's just rivers everywhere, just running all around the place. So, engineers, very, very important. Uh, uh, what else? Oop, that's economy. Naval. Naval, um, I, I, I have very little experience with naval stuff at all. Um, anti submarine equipment. Anti submarine weapons, rather. And torpedoes, which are weapons for submarines. Uh, and then you have your experimental things like computers. Don't forget that this is 1936. The uh, electronic computer was um, not a thing at this point. Uh, there were oddly enough programming languages were, and you can research nuclear bombs, obviously, and uh, missiles, and you know. Surface-to-air missiles, air-to-surface missiles, attack helicopters, and turbojet engines, which are very important. Always get turbojet engines. If you don't, then um, no jet fighters for you, I'm afraid. Uh, artillery, that's also quite good. It's very good for standing armies, though. Not really much else. I do kind of want to get medium tanks at some point. Um... Let's also research artillery and anti-air always does quite good because it stops them from just bombing the shit out of my troops. Uh, so we'll research artillery. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Osaka army arsenal. Right, we do need an aircraft. Um, I think. Strategic bombers. Let's look at that. So you also note that there's numbers next to the symbol. That really, that's basically um, a ratio of how much is, is required. So uh, what I usually do is I count them as more than one. So you have 16 here, 8 here. So this is basically worth 2, this is worth 2, and these are all worth 1. Um, so you can get bomber design here. That will be, so that gets 2, 2... One, so that's five out of uh, seven. That is two, one, one. So that's four out of seven. So I really think Mitsubishi are the best people to research a bomber. Yeah. Yeah! Mitsubishi bombers. Are you kidding me? I'll drive that to work. Um, oh. Alright, so... A day's gone by. Uh, the game will autosave on the first day of every month. So there will be a lag spike every day of every month. <laughs> well, every first day of every month. So April Fools. <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, I think, what should we do to begin with? We should invade Mongolia. They love us, but we don't like them. Because they're Mongolians, and if I do invade them, I get him as one of my research staff. And, are you kidding me? Don't you, wouldn't anyone want a scientist, scientist called Roman Urgen von Sternberg? Are you kidding me? Yes. Um... A Mongolian army. A Mongol army. Are you kidding me? The Mongols sent us an army? How ironic, we're gonna invade them with it. Um So if you hold control you can tell people to uh do all sorts of clever maneuvers. So uh, if we tell them blah, blah. if we tell them strategic redeployment, they will arrive on the 9th of January, guaranteed. However, if we tell them to move They'll rely. They'll arrive on the thirteenth of January, maybe, depending on whether or not they're delayed. So we're going to tell them to strategically de re strategically redeploy there, so they'll get there faster. And these guys have an attachment of medium tanks and armored cars and stuff. This should be a quick war. Uh, so the way you invade countries, which is quite important in this game, is if you go to victory points view. You'll note there's a... This is a fucking... If, there's a certain number of golden provinces. If you capture the golden... If you capture all the golden provinces inside a nation, then you can um, go into there. And when you've declared war, you have an option that replaces influence nation called Annex Nation, which is where you basically say, I own all of the most important parts of your country. You're not going to win this war. Just let me have the rest of the country right now. And most of the time they'll go... Yeah, sure, okay. And I don't know uh, if they're allowed to say, No, we're going to fight to the death, because that would be annoying. So we're gonna, what our battle plan will be is on the... Oh. Oh, yeah, and then the Kaiserac team is just sort of... Well, it's a mod developer, so they're, they're sort of going, Hey, hey, we made this mod. Thank you for downloading it. You're supporting us. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've seen this a hundred times before. Um, also, if you go into this tab, you can make decisions. So, if I issue currency, I get a butt-ton of money, but it does decrease my industrial efficiency. So, I'm not going to do that, because the thing that builds absolutely everything in this game it's industrial capacity. And I don't have a lot. I have about a hundred. Uh, Russia has less than a hundred. Ooh. Germany, however, has two hundred. Yeah. And France has one hundred and twenty. One hundred and thirty. And USA, two hundred and fifty-six. So, yeah, I am not exactly that good at building things at this moment. However, I can improve that. Oh, I don't need ships at the moment. Um, I can improve that by going through here and building industries in each of my provinces. These will take about a year to build, depending on how much research I've done into building. Yeah, you have to research building. Because people don't know how to put sticks and stones together. Honestly, you could have a stick and stone factory. I'm sure that would be perfectly safe. They do it all the time in China. Um, let's go Kobe, Hiroshima, this time let's hope that Hiroshima doesn't get nuked, because that would mean I lose all the factories there. Um, I'm not going to upgrade Korea, because I, I think they will, I think they'll get upset, maybe, Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, so that's as much as I can build for the time being. So, then you can see here in the Productions tab, so we've ordered this many factories to be built, and they say they'll be finished by the December the 12th of 1936, but often these things are delayed. I mean, some of them will say December the 4th, and they're bloody optimists. Um, things take forever to be built in this game. It's not like Ruse, where you can just pump things out at a stupid rate. So, supplies. You have to build supplies to keep your army working. Um, you, see, you build supplies to keep the army working and moving and so on. 
You build reinforcements to uh, replenish damaged uh, armies. Uh, you build upgrades to upgrade the army so they are more modern, have better guns and so on. Production is just basically uh, whatever you're building here. And you have to put in enough to in order to build them on time. And even then they'll probably be delayed. Um, so if we go lock, lock, lock. And then push this up to 68, so 69, I'll do. Then we have enough industrial capacity points that we put into production in order to produce all of these roughly on time. They will get delayed. Um, here we have consumer goods. These are probably the most important ones here. Um, as without consumer goods, your populace will get pissy and they'll shout and scream at you and generally be a bit of a dick. Um, so very, very important. Get lots of these. Uh, also, they earn you money if you make more than enough. Uh, let's just up this. And then this can be pulled into reinforcements. Supplies shouldn't go into the negative either, really, ideally, in an ideal world. Uh, because, you know, reinforcements can wait if you're not in a war. Upgrades can wait if you're, in, you're not planning to attack anything, which we are. Uh, but things like um, supplies and so on cannot wait. Right, well, I'm going to stop I'm going to stop recording. Basically, this is going to be heavy ed heavily edited, so I'm going to stop recording now and re keep continuing recording later. So, uh, when we're ready to invade Mongol Mongolia, I will continue recording then. Bye. You must destroy them! The Earth is counting on you. Good luck.